Another top 10 opponent comes to Fayetteville on a Saturday night. Coming up on this edition of the Hog Central Podcast, somewhat equal coverage as we bring in the voice of the Tigers, Chris Blair. This is the Hog Central Podcast, sponsored by Oakland Sports, Arkansas's best sports betting app. Bet with the brand you trust. Bet with Oakland Sports. And now, here's your host, Steve Sullivan. Welcome to the Hog Central Podcast. I'm Steve Sullivan, longtime KTV sportscaster, along with former Razorback linebacker and team captain David Basil and the creator of the Golden Boot, which the Hogs and Tigers will play for this week. Before we get to the boot, how exciting is this? Back to back. First ever. Top, top 10 teams at night at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Well, we knew at the beginning of the year this was going to be really a great home ticket. Yeah. To have, you know, Tennessee, LSU, Ole Miss, and Texas. But then you have a significant game in Tennessee being number four, and then LSU goes from 13th to 8th in the poll. Never has happened before. People were shocked that we talked about that on the show. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. they, they, they played back-to-back top 10 at home and away, yeah. but not not home-home back-to-back, and it, it will be electric Saturday night. It's going to be fun. And I doubt we'll see a win in the fans rush the field because it would be one expensive ticket to do that. But I'm, I'm not sure the fans care. <laughs> I'm not sure they care. <laughs> but they will rush to the boot if they if they win. Well, I think uh, they should. You know, they won it in 2021. Yeah. But before that, I think LSU had won it about six, seven years. And so some of those guys have never seen the boot. And uh, it's just a matter of pride. It's a trophy game. It doesn't have to be a rivalry game. But all I know is that, Sully, when I play for something, I, I want to have it. And yeah. those, as long as it's sitting on their side of the, the field, they basically say, we're better than you. And so when you win, you want to go get it and bring it back. And it's so big and gaudy. It's 200 it's, pounds. It, yeah, it's fun to hold <laughs> up. It takes a couple of guys. And look at the, some of the guys who've, who've been parts of those wins. McFadden, Sean Andrews, Brandon Burlesworth, yeah. you know, goes back a ways. There's that iconic locker room picture of Sean Andrews. Yeah, sure is. It, uh, it was him and Jason Peters together. And then, uh, and then there's one with Burlesworth with Houston Nutt and Little Rock with it. So, yeah. The question I have, and I really don't know the answer, did Coach Burles come to you or did you go to him? Oh, I went to him. I had done the Burles Award, and he was so impressed. He goes, hey, David, if you got any more <laughs> ideas, bring them to me, and maybe we'll try them. So I, we had not really had a, a sort of a trophy game. Yeah. And uh, LSU, it was like us, had won one national championship back in the 50s. A lot of common ground between LSU and Arkansas over the last 100 years. I mean, games – listen, they stopped our – we would have won back-to-back national yeah. championships. They beat us in the Cotton Bowl. And so it was a natural fit. Now, of course, you know, for LSU, they've won three three national championships. Crazy, isn't it? And so, uh, you know, the boot is not as big of a deal, I think, to their fans. And I think when you, win, when you win it easily, it's not as big of a deal. But they also know, I know this – LSU fans respect Arkansas. They respect yeah. the kind of team. And back before we changed this thing, at the end of the year, they knew they always had their work cut out. Come time we would catch them after Alabama, yeah. week, which is we, we're catching them after a big game this week, which is good. But it's been a fun game. And last four years, Sully's only been three point different. No matter how good they are, yeah. no matter what Brian they Brian Kelly pointed that out. That's today. right. We we play them well, and so uh, and to get them at home, Sully. Woo, you know, I was team cap, honorary team captain, t- what, two years, two years ago? ago? 13-10 loss. Yeah, there was like three people, three people there. It was, <laughs> it was a, cold. It was 11 o'clock start, three people in the stands. It was 10 below. Uh, but this is the kind of game you want LSU at night. I have a better Basil boot memory, and it wasn't looking good going into the game. Arkansas had a, hadn't won a conference game under Brent yeah. Bielema, and you got to speak to the team, and bang, they responded. When that game is over with, okay, if you want to shake hands, that's fine. But once it's done, I want either five of you, ten of you, twenty of you, or all of you to run your ass down there and get that boot. And the our guest today, who was the play-by-play, if I'm not mistaken on the math, I think that was his first game wow. to do play-by-play. So well, said, <laughs> if it wasn't, it was the next year. But yeah, that was something he had not won a conference game, and I forget how many he had. It was up to twenty-two or yeah, something. Yeah, it was a bad streak. And uh, I just remember and the funny story is that I, I said, "Hey, I don't care if there's one of you, two of you, ten or all of you, run your blank over there and get it." And so the the game was in hand late, so yeah. you know, and and I was thinking this is the first time that, that I can remember. Where we were in the lead, had it one where okay, we're just looking at the boot. And I look up at TV and I see that the SEC network is running video of me talking to the team. I didn't know they had a camera in there. I knew what I said. <laughs> so I text my mother, mother, I said a bad word. So just to let you know. And she goes, It's okay. But yeah, to see that the the players rush the field and get the boot, that's in my mind 
what I'd always imagined, that kind of eagerness to go get it. And, and listen, when you haven't had it for a while, you want to do that. When you've had it, it's no big deal. So we got to get more of a habit of having it. This matchup, I think it's a battle of the quarterbacks. Who has a good game? Yeah. Will it be Taylor Green or Garrett Nussmeyer? And they couldn't be more opposite the two of them. Yeah, this is a, you know we we played against some pretty darn good you know you know we played against the Heisman Trophy winner last year, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. yeah, but think about this season. Our secondary has been good. Yeah, but three weeks in a row they have faced freshman quarterbacks. True. Yeah, and, and, and I was sort of surprised. Nussmeyer threw it 51 times against Ole Miss. Yeah, he they, was they, yeah, winging it. He was, and they struggled to run the ball against Ole yeah. Miss. Ole Miss is pretty salty up front, but, uh, yeah, he's a good quarterback. He's not Jaden Daniels. He doesn't hurt you with his feet. I love that, Sully. Yeah. And listen, if I'm a defensive player, I'd much rather drop back knowing that this guy's not going to run the ball like Jaden Daniels could because he was impossible to stop at times. Sam Pittman said the goal this week is to make them one-dimensional. He said he'll take his chances if he's throwing it 50 times, get a couple of picks and uh, make things happen. But he's worried that, you know, he doesn't want to pop in an occasional, uh, you know, 15-yard run or 20-yard run. Well, that's the theory on defense every game. You you want to make a team yeah. one-dimensional. The problem is LSU knows you're going to do that. And so LSU is challenged. Listen, they got some dudes on the offensive line. I'm really surprised. Yeah, they're that, tackles. He's been sacked twice. Yeah, I'm surprised they have struggled to run the ball as big as they are up front. But uh, listen, we have done well in stopping the run this year. I, I like the way we're playing. and. I think we're going to get after him. And so, uh, yeah, I think we have a much better chance if he's throwing the ball 50 times. If you look at the numbers and you look at LSU's defense, you say, wow, those numbers are terrible. But they're yeah. getting better. Yeah, they look better last week. Blake Baker, their defensive coordinator, makes twice as much as Travis Williams. He's the highest paid defensive coordinator in college football, came over from Missouri, getting paid $2.5 million a year. That yeah. defense has to get better. Yeah, and I think uh, we were talking about on our show today, I think they may be better without the uh, young man who, who tore his knee out. Yeah. Uh, they were trying to find. I just went blank on his name, but uh, uh, who really ate us up? Yeah. I think three years ago. But yeah, they're playing. Hey, listen, I tell you what, Sully, they can pressure the quarterback. They're athletic too. Five sacks in each of the last three games. Yeah, they they can pressure the quarterback. Ole Miss didn't have an answer for him at times, and so again, Bobby Petrino knows this. You know it going in. Yeah. So plan accordingly. You Ole Miss didn't score a touchdown in the second half or overtime, which is kind of hard to believe with that offense. Well, you know, when Ole Miss, when the LSU plays like they're capable of, they're tough to beat. They've got athletes. They've got athletes. But I tell you, Arkansas, there's something about it, Sully. When I played against certain teams, you just knew you were going to play well. Yeah. Arkansas, for whatever reason, has not been intimidated most of the time by LSU. We go, let's go. It's a border state. Let's go. We're not scared of you. You know, we're, you're up in our neck of the woods. Let's go. So that's why the line has gone from six and a half yeah. last week down to two after – LSU beats a ninth-ranked Ole Miss team and still lost points to us. So that shows you where a lot of people, the respect that Arkansas has. You talk about the two teams. You could look at LSU and say, hey, they should have lost to South Carolina. Ole Miss was a better team. And you flip with Arkansas and you say, they left two games, Oklahoma State yeah. and Texas A&M, they could have won those games. Yeah. You know, but, but, but I, aren't you? I, I was trying to decide whether I thought it would be better if we played LSU off of a loss. I think a win. I, I think so now. I, I think the way the game played out is like, okay. At this point, let them hey, win. It's a bigger fish if you it, reel it, it in. It is. It's a bigger game. It means more. Their back's not quite as much against the wall. They're going to come in fat and happy, and everybody's patting them on the back. And and we are ready. You know, hopefully, Taylor Green sounds like he's going to be ready to play and healthy. And you know, last year, you know who was a big player last year in the game? You remember the receiver? No idea. Lucas. Lucas has a 59-yard touchdown. Yes. I think he had 120, 130 yards receiving. And that's where I first said, wow, this tight end is a real deal. So, you know, hopefully we have somebody like that. He has that kind of game if he's healthy. But this two weeks, Sully, hopefully he's been positive for the team. I think LSU is the best tight end in college football, yeah. Mason Taylor. Yeah, and he good. came up huge on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, 25 catches. And had, <laughs> I don't know, but they were all of, yeah. big catches. Yeah, he and them. he looks like your prototype NFL tight end. Yeah, it's a question, can, can we put any pressure – can yeah. we put any pressure on Nussmeyer? You know, and, and what do we give up to do that? What do we give up to try to get that pressure? They on? feel like they have the two best tackles in college football. Yeah, they are mountains. Yeah, they are big dudes. Uh, Will Campbell is, uh, I think, the best tackle, and he'll probably go up against. I wonder if they move Landon Jackson around. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, certainly could do that. I mean, th this is listen. This is where you make some money, Landon Jackson. You know, he's had two good games in a row now, Sully, yeah. <clears throat> going against this really good offensive line. Uh, let's see what you can do. But, you know, again, last week, too, you had some s situations where you lost contain. Again, this quarterback's not going to hurt you quite yeah, as bad. Yeah, that's right. You know, so maybe you can pin your ears back a little bit more. Something we probably won't know until game time is how is yeah. Taylor Green's leg. 
I you mean, know, his ankle. Is, I, is yeah, he 100%? I've, I've had bone bruises before, and um, I don't know if I had it right at the knee, yeah. but I've had it around that area. And two weeks, it, it, I mean, that's pretty good time, and I'm sure he's been very aggressive in his rehab. So I think he's got a great – remember, he went back in the game and tried to play, yeah. and it was just too much of a limp. So I'm, I'm thinking that he's going to be okay. It would be disappointing if he's not. Interesting to see uh, what kind of role – Braylon Russell plays this week. I mean, he got more and more touches last week and was very successful, and he's yeah. feeling good about himself. He was out looking for an agent on Twitter. <laughs> he's, I don't he, get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, that I don't get, but yeah, this is a you know new new era, new time. But he was very important. I think he's you know, he's got to produce now. He's he's throwing that out there now. Keep keep producing, young man. And uh, I think he'll get. They have confidence in him now. And, and against that big old uh, uh, defense yeah. for LSU, I think it'd be nice for him to get a lot of carries. Let's talk about Sam Pittman. I think he's in the same boat as me. Neither one of us is going to get a long term contract. You work year by year, and I think that's the case with Coach Pittman. And through six games, he's in great shape. But I think anything less than three and three in this, the way we've got the expectations up right now. People are going to be upset if, so, you, if you don't finish the season right. Sully, we talked about this a few weeks ago. Remember, I said, just think, Sully, if Arkansas beats Tennessee, yeah. how big that will be. Sully, if Arkansas beats <laughs> LSU, if Arkansas beats LSU, Sully, yeah. we're in the top 25. We're 5-2. and two. And I'll tell you, the, the yeah. team to me, the best Anything team. Anything was within reach then. That's right. That's right. And, and going back, you know, thinking of, of, you know, I'm not so sure the best team I haven't seen all year is A&M. In person, for sure. I'm with you. Yeah, I think A&M may be the best team I've seen. And, you know, Georgia was fine and Alabama was fine. Te- Texas may be the best. But, ooh, A&M, I think, prepared us for anybody we're going we're gonna to see. But, yeah, Sully, 5-2, and two, top 25. <laughs> but, hey, watch out for Mississippi State. They're getting yeah. better, and they got a quarterback who can throw it. Scored 31 against Georgia a Saturday. Makes me nervous, but we got to get this game first. Yeah, the more I watch this conference, I just don't I know, see. Crazy. A, I just I don't see a super team. I know, I know. Texas maybe by a little bit's the best, but I think anybody on any night. But I tell you, the, the night factor of this game, we have all day again. What's difference is between the the Tennessee game, Sully. People hoped it would be a good game. We can't yeah. believe. It. Well, now we've seen what we can do. Now there's expectations, but those fans to go in there Saturday night and make some noise, and they hate LSU. Yeah. Our fans hate LSU, yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be fun to hate LSU, you know, and make a lot of noise. Hey, and while they didn't put up a lot of points against Tennessee, they did move the ball, and Bobby Petrino I thought schemed well against a good defense in Tennessee, and they have a good feeling coming into this game because I thought they had momentum offensively. They moved the ball at the end of the game, they moved the ball the entire first half against that vaunted defense. Well, as you know. Uh, Bobby Petrino doesn't come to paint, Sully, and so he has a lot of <laughs> LSU history. knows that he has a lot of history, a lot of history against LSU. Yeah, a lot of good history. We and, like it, and, and, I, and the big game factor is just huge. I mean, I love what Sam Pittman said today, and he said this all season. And we wondered early in the season if he really believed it. He was just saying it. He said they got a great team, but so do we. Yeah, yeah. No, Sully, don't you you feel now? We've watched. We're good enough to beat them. Yeah, we're good enough to beat them. Now, listen, they they may win the game. But we have enough players, and I've seen enough to believe that we can play. This is not a, a great. This is not a top five LSU yeah. team. Top top ten is very good, but we're good enough. We've shown we're good enough to to, to play with these guys. I think this is a huge week for Travis Williams in that secondary. I yeah. mean, this is the ultimate test. This kid's going to fling it. He's going to test you deep. He's going to test you all over the field. He's going to take chances, though. I saw that against Ole Miss. He'll try to throw into tight windows. He'll try to throw on the run. Yeah, I think this kind of game, Sully, you, you hope that you can make some big plays. You know, you got to make some big plays somewhere to get the, you know, can't do the turnovers, but who's going to come up with a big play? Who's going to get a pick? Yeah. You know, who's going to get a big knockdown or stop a third down conversion? So, and special teams, another. Remember last year had Cam Little, yes. had three field goals. And so when, when we, we didn't capitalize on getting in the red zone last year, and that hurt us early on. We kept getting close and we could not get a touchdown. When we, when we get in the red zone, we need to get touchdowns if we can. I have to appreciate the fact that we're in mid-October and we have a game that means a lot. How about that? Been a while. I mean, think about what the expectations outside the state were going to this season. Sully, this off week was one of the best off weeks I've <laughs> ever had. It was so nice. Saturday, I was sitting in my jacuzzi, watching. The, I was flipping all through the football games. and Because now Arkansas is respected. Yeah, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the Oklahoma sports line it, it, it moved from six and a half down to two and a half, and so 
I mean, that show, that's a sign of respect, not so yeah. much a knock against LSU. It's like, wait a minute, Arkansas, we've seen Arkansas, we've seen LSU. Arkansas has got a, it's basically almost a pick em kind of game. So I like the fact, as you were saying, respect from others around the country, whether it be fans or coaches yeah. or whatever. So I think, too, you can look at the teams that are succeeding in the SEC, and they have pretty good quarterbacks. When you go to the bottom end and you got Oklahoma, you have yeah. uh, Auburn, um, Mississippi State's been struggling with quarterback. Right, right. I mean, their quarterback went out shape, and they got the, now the backup guy. Apparently, yeah. you like to watch yeah, him. Look good. Yeah, I, I, but watch it, out. Yeah, but you, yeah. you, yeah. that's the first thing you have to have if you well, want to have a, a great season. Look at Vandy. That yeah. quarterback is the yeah. difference oh, yeah. maker. You know, the transfer from New Mexico. Yeah, he's. Yeah, you, you got to have a dynamic quarterback in some way, whether it be with his arm or legs or combos. So, and it'll be like I'm like you, Sully. You're right. I think it's going to be the battle of the quarterbacks who has the best game, and it, it takes it takes eleven guys. Oh, Sully, everybody's got to do their part. LSU. If you look at just the four stars and the five yeah. stars, LSU's always going to have more. But Sully, four years in a row, this game's come down to three points. And if you go back, if you go back to you know, you know what year this is for the boot? I have no idea. This is the 29th. 29th. I don't like the record. It's yeah. probably something like yeah. Uh, I'd have to go back and look. Well, the last 1811 or yeah, th- yeah. They've got they've got an advantage, but we've gone in streaks. It's it's time for us to yeah. win a few, you know. And uh, but none of their wins have been memorable. All ours are memorable. <laughs> I mean, even your cla- even your your boot game. Yeah. And you go to the the miracle on Markham's. The we didn't come to paint. The oh my we gosh. brought the wood. Yeah. And even and, and, and in the the loss, they the McFadden up the middle for eighty, and then yeah. they come back. Trenton Holiday comes back. With a 80, 90 yard touchdown. The wildest fact yeah. in, this, in this rivalry is Arkansas knocks off number one LSU, and I think LSU goes on to win national they championship do. that year. They and do. Houston not is out. I know. Do you remember the year we go to LSU and, and they're number one or we're number three? And we jump yes. out 14 nothing. And then it was over I'm from like, there. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. And Honey Badger returned to, I mean, and yeah. there's just, like you said, there's so many cool parts of it. Um, but boy, this would be a big win. That's the great thing about this rivalry has been the games. Yeah. I mean, the great games and the close games. Yeah, yeah, and it's again. I think it's going to be that way this time, Sully. It, it just like you said, though, we haven't had these kind of games in Fayetteville that are important like this. Yeah. It's nice. Now we're not ranked, but when you play number four and number yeah. eight and back to back, I always feel like Las Vegas has a you know because they know where the money's going, and they set the the line at where they can get the most bets, sure. and most money from both sides. And the fact that it's like a two-point yeah. game just shows you. Yeah. I think you can throw a, a, just a, a, a ra- uh, just a drop rag over about seven teams in the SEC, and the line's going to be two or three points when they play. And we've argued about the, the value of the week off before the game. You know, if you're playing well, yeah. you, don't want, you don't want to take the week off. We needed off. it. We needed it from a health standpoint, and it's only two weeks to prepare. So you've watched LSU. You've got two two weeks of film. What does Bobby Petrino see? Uh, what does Travis Williams see? That maybe I like that. I like we've got two weeks to really get and then maybe throw in a few ringers ourselves. Yeah, maybe come up with something that they haven't seen. Um, all it takes is one or two plays, Sully. One or two plays here and there that completely change the outcome of a game. Yeah, it's just exciting because Saturday to Saturday, you never know what's going to happen in the SEC. I mean, Whoa, I, I wow. thought I thought for sure Georgia. After the game, I mean, Alabama after the game they had last week was going to make a statement this week. No, and I tell you, yeah, South Carolina looked pretty good. Yeah, and and Georgia gave up 31 in Mississippi State, and you know you got Kentucky losing to to Vandy. It's it's been a while, and and then Tennessee barely beats Florida. It's amazing they're ranked number 11th and really should have lost back to back games. I was not impressed with Tennessee when they came to Fayetteville. I I mean, they're we were more physical. Yeah, and their quarterback is still iffy. I mean, he's a freshman, and the more I look at college football. Unless he's a special freshman, it's tough for freshmen to, you know, to be consistent week week in and week out in the better, SEC. Yeah, I guess good competition. That's right. Yeah, where are you going to be Saturday? I knew you're going to be the press box, but you're not speaking to the team or anything. You know, no, right? I haven't been asked. I will. <laughs> I, I will replay uh, the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's such a cool. The uh, Dar- Dari Noka is, is. We got a clip of that where he's. You see the. Th- I mean, really a hundred players running yeah. at one time, and I used to see that as a kid growing up in Florida. The Michigans and Michigan uh, states, the Minnesota playing for the the axe and the all the the, the yeah. turtle or what I mean, all these things. And I always loved it. They would go run and get it. And growing up in the SEC, you didn't see many trophy games. There just haven't been many, and so. Uh, it's you know I, I hope they take off and get that thing if they win the boot. Well, I know Sam Pittman values trophies. He yeah. has that picture where he won all three, all three, yeah, or four if you include A and M. I mean, yeah. 
but uh, I, I think he values trophies. And uh, on top of what they did at Tennessee in the, in the field rushing, uh, I think this would just be a great moment. I mean, take down another top 10 team. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you talk about recruiting, Sully, the benefits there. And again, all of a sudden, then Sully, then you're 5 and 2, right top 25. Yeah. You, you got Mississippi State. And then, and then you got Ole Miss coming back in. That's I mean. You, I mean, you got a path to the playoff, which, which you, sounds just absurd know, to talk about. But 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 as you said, I don't think there are many teams that are just that much better than us. Yeah. You know, Texas may be. You can look at it and say Texas is. Hey, the thing Sam Pittman has done at Arkansas, he's been competitive in just about every game. That's why those last two games last year were so troubling. Yeah, they got. Listen, the guys got to go out and play hard. That's what they got to got to play smart. Yeah. And play hard. I, I like this coaching staff again. I, How I, can I, you not be motivated? National TV, prime man. time. Uh, it's going to be that place is going to be busting at the it's seams. Gonna, it's going to be. They're going to be playing that train whistle at you know <laughs> at, at incredible volumes on yeah, third down. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be good. And I think the big crowd too really benefits a defense when you get when you get some juice going. You know, and that's well. Again, you've you've heard Greg McElroy, other people say it's the loud one of the loudest stadiums they've ever played in. Sully at night uh, is going to be, and you've got ESPN there again. Last last time it was ABC. This time ESPN had. What do we have last time? Six six point three million viewers at, at yeah. the peak. I think it's going to be another big crowd. You have, of course, Georgia and Texas on. That's a big game. It's too, a but, huge Saturday. But yeah, I, yeah, it's back to back Saturdays of great football. All right, we're going to take a time out now, and hopefully, we'll join the uh, voice of the Tigers. Get his perception on the the boot and what they think of of this rivalry. Oakland Sports is so simple to use, anyone can do it. Probably even an ex-football player. And you can take it anywhere. Pocket size, sort of like you, Raj. Small, perhaps, but powerful, like this offer. Sign up now for Oakland Sports and get up to $1,000 in bonus bets. That's like a do-over in case you make a questionable decision. Too bad they can't do that for haircuts. I'm calling your mom. Now with new and easy funding options. Bet with the brand you trust. Bet with Oakland Sports. Woo! Like it. We can take people where most people cannot take them. The generations coming together. That place was jumping. The Triple Option, presented by Wendy's, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to our Hog Central podcast. It's a pleasure to have our first guest by Zoom, and we have so many great play-by-play announcers in the SEC, and this is one of them right here, Chris Blair, the voice of Tiger baseball, basketball, and football. And yet another great call Saturday, buddy, a, a walk-off win. Yeah, people ask uh, all the time, they go, is that the kind of game you enjoy? And the truth is, no, I'm like fans. I mean, uh, I, I don't like them being that close. Uh, although I will say I'm, I'm good for one, maybe one a season. The rest, I'd love to have 40-point blowouts. But uh, unfortunately, LSU plays in the SEC, and, and that just doesn't happen. Uh, so, hey, it was an exciting atmosphere. It was It was incredible to be a part of it. I mean... You know, people talk about the legend and lore of Tiger Stadium, and uh, it certainly lived up to it on Saturday night. The crowd did their part, and then there in the final uh, portion of the regular uh, uh, of regulation, as well as overtime, uh, Coach Kelly and the Tigers did their part, and it's a 29-26 win. Yeah, uh, uh, Chris, I don't know how you guys now with all your fancy lights and the big stadium there going dark and coordinated with music. Man, I don't know how you can call a game anymore. I mean, the atmosphere had to be electric that night. Yeah, I mean, you can get caught, you know, becoming a spectator there in the booth. Uh, luckily, a lot of that stuff happens during the timeout when we don't have to do anything. Uh, well, we, we, we should be doing something. should be preparing to come back. But uh, it, it was cool. I mean, uh, you know, the crowd was electric. Uh, it really felt like that, guys, all week leading up to the game. And, you know, I know some of that was because we were coming off a of bye week, so everybody was, you know, excited about the win over South Alabama, not not necessarily beating South Alabama as much as just the way the team looked, especially defensively. Um, if you just took that in a vacuum and looked at the way LSU played, the way they aligned, the way they tackled, um, you knew regardless of who they were playing that day that they were much improved. And now you just hoped you could carry that over uh, to a much better, much more explosive Ole Miss offense. And, and I think they got the answer. I, you know, they held Ole Miss without a touchdown in the second half and, and overtime. And then that's not easy to do. And um, so, yeah, you, you, all week everybody was anticipating it, and then it uh, came to fruition on Saturday night. Talk about the boot. Uh, 
What does it mean to LSU, if anything, and this rivalry? You've been part of, as you've been nine years, you've seen some wild games. Uh, what's this rivalry mean to you, or what's this matchup with Arkansas mean to LSU fans? You know, I think there's a sense, guys, that that maybe the the rivalry means more to Arkansas. And, you know, I, I don't know. I haven't talked to every single LSU fan. But what I can tell you is that when LSU doesn't have the boot in Baton Rouge, they don't like it. So that tells me that, that it means something to them. Um, and, you know, I've seen the guys after a game in Fayetteville, uh, you know, when the game's over and, and it's on the other side of the field. You, you can't tell me that those 18 to 22-year-olds uh, wearing purple and gold aren't excited to go lift that monstrous trophy um, and bring it back. So, you know, I think it does mean something. I know it means something to the players. Um, and I think, as I said, for the fan base, they love it when it's here in Baton Rouge, and they really don't like it when it's in Fayetteville. So, you know, I think it's important. Um, and, you know, I think this particular season with a 12-team playoff and the parity that we have obviously seen already through the first five and six weeks of, of SEC play uh, tells you that really the, the boot is secondary, at least in LSU's mind. And I, and I would argue maybe even in Arkansas's mind in the sense that they're coming off that huge win uh, over number 4 Tennessee – uh, probably feel like they should be getting, you know, votes in the top 25, probably believe they should be in the top 25. And and this is an opportunity for them to follow up defeating a number four Tennessee with a number eight LSU. And, and if that doesn't bolster their argument, I, I don't know what does. So I think both teams realizing what lies ahead in the schedule I mean, every game is so monumental, and this one is no different, regardless of whether there's a trophy or rivalry or not. This is an important game for Arkansas and an extremely important game for LSU. It seems to be, uh, Chris, that this game doesn't matter really what the rankings are or you know uh, how many games e- either team has won. Arkansas generally plays its best game against LSU. You look at the last four years, you know, three point either direction wins the game and I think this will be I think your first game against Arkansas calling the Arkansas LSU was 2015 in Baton Rouge's memory serves me right looking at your bio and that was a, if you remember Sully that was a one Arkansas had won 17 to nothing the year before yeah goes go to Baton Rouge and you win 31 14 that was Bielema and then the slap and then after that Chris boy through the through some really bad the, the valley of death for, for many years for <laughs> with uh, with uh, Chad Morris and and some struggles there but then the last four years, again, we've seen the game be a little bit closer. Uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe Arkansas gets up for LSU. Um, but but most fans, I think, are going to, you know, when they tune in, they expect to see a, a tight game. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the first thing came out of Coach Kelly's mouth this morning on his weekly press conference. Uh, once he turned the page from the Ole Miss game, he said, hey, guys, this is the last four games, as you said, have been decided by exactly three points each, uh, including uh, Arkansas's win by three points uh, back in uh, 21. Uh, LSU's won, you know, two straight games. I remember the last time we were up there in 2022 was an early game. Uh, my sideline reporter Gordy Rush, uh, he likes to refer to it as they were watering the ice when we. Were <laughs> it was cold. It was. Uh, it was cold. And, uh, so uh, we're we're used to seeing them putting water on the field, but not to get rid of ice. Uh, at least not here in Baton Rouge. So, uh, and you know that was a game where if Harold Perkins doesn't. Yeah. Right. You know, beat Harold Perkins, uh, LSU doesn't get out of there with a win. And then, you know, you go back to last year, and and, and for Tiger Oops. fans, guys, I mean, it, it, it was talked about all season long and all off season. You had one of the best offenses in the country last year with Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and Brian Thomas Jr. and the rest. And, and yet, you know, they had to outscore Arkansas 34-31, you know, uh, in route to his Heisman campaign. So, yeah, you're right. I, I, I think some of it is because Arkansas really wants to win this game. Um, and, you know, it, it, when they have it up there, uh, you know, Reynolds Razorback Stadium is as daunting and as uh, intimidating as any other place you're going to go in the SEC. And I don't think it'll be any different uh, Saturday night. I mean, I was glad personally. I'd love to get back early. There's no question when we go on the road. Uh, but but I was kind of pleased to see it be in the evening. And that's not because it's an advantage for LSU, but I think just from a college football fan, I think that's going to set a, a different mood than, than playing at 11 a.m. Central. Do you feel spoiled with the quarterbacks you've covered or called? Uh, Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels, <laughs> Nussmeyer, <laughs> who's next? <laughs> you know, it's interesting because when I arrived here in uh, 2015, you know, when I would talk to LSU fans, they would say, you know, this year, uh, you know, pick a year, uh, 2003 or, or not 2003, 2001 or 
uh, or 95 or you just they would always say you know we had this incredible running back we had three really good receivers we didn't throw to a lot we just were missing that quarterback and if we'd have had that quarterback that would have been an LSU team that, that <laughs> certainly would have fought for an SEC title and maybe even a national title and then lo and behold you know, Joe Burrow shows up, and now we've had two Heisman winners in the last five seasons, and we got Garrett Nussmeyer, who, uh, again, didn't have his best performance Saturday. He's the first to admit it, but, you know, did throw for well over 300 yards and three touchdowns to give him 18 so far on the year, which is tops in the SEC, and, you know, won a national award earlier week for, for being a quarterback. He won the SEC Offensive Player of the Week. Um, so he's off to an incredible start. So yeah, it's it, you, you have been blessed, but there are LSU fans who remember when they did not have that type of play uh, from the quarterback, and they'll be the first to point it out to you, and they can give you exact games and dates. Yeah, Chris, too. You know, trying to def- to figure out what the identity of uh, for this LSU team is. I mean, you got great athletes everywhere, but what would you? How would you describe this team? What's the identity so far through the season? Well, it's been an offense that, again, starts with Nussmeyer and, you know, his ability and the ability to make any throw. I mean, he's got the NFL arm. He can throw uh, accurate and immediately. Uh, he's shown the propensity to be very accurate down the field. And, and then you combine that with, in his early days here at LSU, absolutely no fear. Right. Uh, double coverage, triple coverage, I can get it in there. I can needle it in. And, uh, you know, Coach Kelly addressed that in the offseason, even after spring football. He said, you know, Garrett was called upon when it was mop-up time. Either LSU was losing big or winning big. And when you're out there and you get that opportunity, you want to get the ball, you want to run around, you want to make plays. You want to show what you can do. It's a different mindset when it becomes your team and your offense. Then protecting the football, making good decisions is key, uh, regardless of what you can do with your arm. So I think Garrett's done a very good job in adjusting that. And he's got a great group of receivers, a very deep receiver room, albeit a little banged up at the moment. Hopefully they're going to get some of those guys back this week. We'll know later with the availability report. Uh, but it's a really deep, you know, I mean, you, you start with Kyron Lacey, the hero from Saturday night, the leading receiver. Transfer C.J. Daniels is a very sure-handed, kind of an intermediate specialist. He's the guy that, that Garrett's looking for if he needs to go underneath. Um, uh, you got Xavion Thomas, who, who has started to emerge as kind of a guy, Aaron Anderson, typically a slot receiver, big, big play on Saturday to tie the game, uh, with 27 seconds. He's also been very good. And then you've got Mason Taylor, who's a tight end, who's one of the best in the country, followed by two freshman tight ends who really played wide receiver in high school. And that's Trey Des Green, who had the touchdown Saturday. He was a wide out at Zachary high school. Um, and they can even kind of use him as a tight end slash wide receiver. And then the sophomore Camorian pimped him the same way. He was also uh, a, a receiver in high school, listed as a tight end, but he also is a target uh, on any given play. So I think that's the identity offensively. It's, it's a pass happy, um, you know, they threw 51 pass attempts uh, on Saturday, and that's, that's their bread and butter. The running game has not been where they want it to be, and Coach Kelly said he feels like it's because all of the units that have to be successful – in the run game are not on the same page at the same time. Occasionally, the offensive line does get a good crease open. Running backs are unable to shed like an initial block behind the line of scrimmage and the play goes nowhere. Or wide receivers and tight ends out on the boundary and perimeter are not laying the blocks to get what would be a four-yard gain into a 15 or 20-yard gain. So he kind of says, we've got the players to do it. We're just not all doing what we need to do when we need to do it. And defensively, it, it's been a work in progress. But the last two games, this LSU defense led by Whit Weeks, the sophomore linebacker who is, to me now, turned into a prototypical SEC backer. Uh, 18 tackles on Saturday, 10 of those solos, one sack, two tackles for loss, and a fumble uh, fumble force. I mean, he's, he's, he's the real deal, and Greg Penn's another one. So I think defensively, this team is, is still not as good as they can be. Um, but they're hoping they can just get a marginally better each and every week, uh, and, and they'll certainly need it against uh, one of the best play callers Saturday. And finally, uh, I love your journey. Uh, started calling high school ball, and I think that's yeah. a great thing about most big-time play-by-play guys is that they started on Friday nights. Indeed, indeed. I, I tell people all the time what I do now, what I, you know, what I learned to do now I learned uh, at J.W. Babb Stadium in, in Greenwood, South Carolina for almost 10 seasons calling Greenwood High football. I mean, it's they have the same uh, length of field, same width of field, uh, same number of players. And, and uh, you know, my father told me a long time ago, if you don't use numbers, you use names. My mother, a school teacher, said you got to make sure you get the names right. 
or uh, mom or grandma or the aunt's going to give you a call. And so I learned how to do all of that in, uh, in, in high school. And I love high school football. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the great atmospheres to go wherever you are, in Arkansas, Louisiana, Georgia, South Carolina, doesn't matter. And uh, so everything that I do now, the stadium's a little bigger. There's a bigger crowd. Uh, the players are certainly the top-notch student athletes in the world, but the game's the same. So you try to get as many reps as you can to kind of get your own rhythm, kind of get your own – uh, pace of the game and how you call a game and steal from this guy and that guy and this guy and and then try to make a little bit of your own. But uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games at the high school level before ever dreaming of being at a place like LSU. And it served me well. It's been a pleasure visiting with you. I just hope we don't hear any epic touch, uh, touchdown calls on, sa- on Saturday. But uh, look forward to seeing you Saturday in Fayetteville. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. It's always fun to come up there. It's always a, a, a hard-fought game, and I don't expect anything different Saturday. But, uh, you know, if I could put in an order, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like a much easier, smoother victory for LSU. But <laughs> something tells me there's another group wearing red and white that it's not going to do that. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, yeah. Chris. All right. I love the fact that he said, you know, they actually miss the trophy when they don't have it. Well, again, I think if you're LSU, you, you've won national championships. That's what you measure success yeah. by. And, and having a, a trophy game is not the most important. And I thought, listen, for Arkansas fans, this is just a byproduct. You want to get to Atlanta. Yeah, that's, that's what right. you want to win. You want to get the playoffs. If you get a trophy along the way, that's that's what it, that's what it is, you know. That's the first guy out of Arkansas that's mentioned Arkansas as a possible team, you know, this means a lot too. you know, yeah, it's not yeah. like, you know, a lot of folks are just, you know, we're, we're playing a spoilers role, Yeah, but he's close enough to know to see what's been going on in the SEC. Think of the, uh, the wealth of, uh, of talent that they've had, you know, you mentioned those quarterbacks. What about receivers? Yeah. Malik neighbors was yeah, the receiver yeah, they had yeah, last yeah. year. That, and the other guy, I think it's Thomas. He's with yeah. Jacksonville. I mean, they're just loaded. Justin with, Jefferson. Yeah. Good <laughs> Lord. I mean, it's it, Beckman. The, uh, yeah, Beckham, Beckham. 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 Oh, it's good Lord. It's crazy. <laughs> and listen, Jaden Daniels last year. You know, but that's the great thing about beating them. I mean, yeah. they've had all those quarterbacks and Arkansas has been right there at the end of the games with these guys. We, we had them on the ropes last year yeah. at Baton Rouge with Jaden Dan- Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. And Malik Neighbors. Emily Neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's crazy. It, so, but, it, but you said but the Petrino factor, now the Travis Williams factor. I'm telling you, yeah. I think Travis Williams, man, he's, he's uh, you know, he wants this game. This would be another resume yeah, builder for him. And there was a lot of love for Travis Williams this past week, so he doesn't need to lay an egg on Saturday. No, no. Well, I, I think you got to play physical. If you can't, if you go out there and play physical with LSU, you, you know, that you so Ole Miss very physical, you know. Yeah. That's why it came to the down the wire. You better come up there and be ready to get hit in the face and, and return the favor. You have to affect Nussmeyer. You have to get in his head. Yeah, that, you know, I, I'm going to go back and watch some more video about his arm strength. You know, he did make some really good throws, and he did seem pretty fearless. I get that fourth down throw was, you know, it was the key to the game. The game yeah. was on the line, and so yeah, uh, he's been around a while. So he's been been around some great coaches and, and players. All right, I think we talked this one out. Yes. Yes, let's just hope. How you feeling, Sully? You feeling good? Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I want to be at the point five minutes to go in that game that I say, Baz, it's time to go to the field. And you say, let's go. That's exactly right. <laughs> that it's like a 10-point game. I made you wait. I said, it's no. Like I, a, it's like I, a 10-point game or 13-point game. Yeah, I don't want to be in the elevator going down and miss whatever happens. And so, uh, yeah, it'll be exciting. I'll be curious to see if the line moves anymore. You think the line will stay at two and a half? I think it'll stay there. Yeah, I I don't think it's going to be heavy money on either side right now. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think we've kind of dug in with the line. And uh, the fact that it moved, if you I mentioned last Friday, if you're going to bet the game, bet it now because it was at six and a half points. By the way, Sully, I am uh, eight and one in my NFL picks and eight and four the last two weeks. And the NFL is more difficult than college. Yeah, yeah. So I bet that, that, it's taken me a while, but it, thanks to Oakland Sports, yeah, uh, it's been a lot of fun being on that app. If you hadn't gotten it, download it. It's a thousand dollars in bonus bets, and my picks are up there. So you yeah. can choose to go with me. 4-0 last week, NFL. 4-1 this weekend, NFL. So I'm in a groove. College about 64%. You can fade me or go with me. So not going to bet the Razorbacks. Not going to yeah. not going to do that. I just I, I'm just I can't I can't concentrate. I can't enjoy the game knowing that I picked them or whatever. So, but I'm I may be I may be picking them on the air to win, but I just don't want to pick them on the app to win. Don't want to, don't want to jinx them. 
And don't forget to like and subscribe to the Hog Central Podcast. New episodes drop Tuesday on YouTube or listen on the go. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and every major podcast platform.